Welcome and thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, then my name is Simon Baxter. I'm a full-time woodland photographer and I've been creating YouTube videos amongst trees since 2016. If you're familiar with my work, then you know that I love to print, either prints to sell or simply for the joy of taking that final step in the creative process. Now, I don't take the task of printing lightly. If you're a perfectionist like me, then it can be a challenging and expensive process to produce something that represents everything that you hoped for when you made the image, but it's undoubtedly worth the effort. Here in the UK, we're well into winter now, so it's a great time to get cozy and print some of your favorite images. We're going to print two photographs, look at why I want to print them, and have a brief overview of how they've been edited. I've chosen two very different images, one with beautiful autumn colors and a degree of unconventional complexity, but arguably a less obvious choice, and the other a simple winter image with some features that are begging to be printed. I never rush into making a print. I like to let the image ferment on my hard drive for a while. Well, I'm sure there's a more appealing word than ferment, but you know what I mean. Uh, I might share it online, um, leave it for a few months, go back and reminisce and just see how my feelings alter with time. I don't always achieve what I visualize, but these images from 2022 represent everything that I imagined for these trees. The fact that I still feel good, if not better about them now means that they definitely should be printed. I'm in the camp of preferring to review and lightly edit images as soon as I possibly can after making them. And that's because much of my photography is experience led, built upon my emotional connection to both subject and place. I want the observed experience, the feeling of being there and my intent to inform my editing choices to ensure that my translation is representative of my intent and also respectful to my memory of the moment. But remember that everything is exactly that. A translation. At some point a critical and objective eye has to become part of the process, which is why it's so important to live with an image and allow time itself to distance you from the emotion and memory of the day. After all, what's a few months or another year when the print could be framed for 100 years? It's never going to be perfect and no doubt new iterations will follow, but it has to feel right before you think about selling it. Always fighting to create, publish, share, and feed social media. Printing is your moment just to slow things down and relax. Do it as a reward to yourself and give your images the time and attention to detail they so desperately deserve. First up is this image of a sublime and majestic birch tree with its graceful drapes encapsulated by this very rare hoarfrost. It was a very unusual scene because of this band of cool frost in the distant shade. The sun behind the slightly thinning clouds created some warmth to contrast with the coolness which helped the tree to stand proud. Compositionally it's quite simple, a bit of negative space, good edges, but not so much breathing room that we start to lose sight of the stunning delicate detail in the branches and the gap through to the warm trunk. Here's the rather flat unedited raw file but as you can see everything has been preserved. It's a bit dark so that the highlights weren't blown but it gave a nice histogram to work with. That curious but most welcome contrast from warm to cool was natural. The most important step was to reintroduce the brightness I recall so that we can reimagine the clean ethereal feeling. Nothing else removed, nothing else added just an injection of light with exposure and the tone curve. Very quickly, before we head into the office and start printing, I just wanted to let you know that the 2024 calendar that I helped Trees for Life to produce is now half price. It'd be really nice to shift the remaining few because the sale of these also helps to support the revival of nature in Scotland. 12 of my images, including some all-time favorites such as Family Tree, and at half price, £6.50 is an absolute bargain. So please take a look, your support is greatly appreciated. Right, to the office, let's start printing. I don't want to repeat lots of things I've said in the past, so I'll put some links in the description below for other printing and editing videos that I've made. But what I think is worth reiterating is the importance of viewing your image a bit smaller and on a white background. It just helps you to visualize the final printed result, but it's a step that will also tell you if the image is too dark or too heavily vignetted. Another nifty trick is to turn the image upside down and that will help you to better assess its balance of color, form and light. I mean, just look at that band of coolness. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. 
Also imperative is an accurately calibrated monitor coupled with ICC profiles for your paper of choice to ensure that what you see is what you get in the final print. Now I have two very similar monitors by BenQ. On the left hand side here is the newer SW272U which I've had since last year and over on the right of my shoulder is the SW271 which I've had for around five years now. I would like to take this opportunity to thank BenQ who have supported me over the years and been very kind enough to supply me with these two monitors which have been serving me very well indeed. The SW272 is similar to the 271 so they work well together but this new version is definitely slicker with its discrete buttons, wireless control puck on the anti-slip base for switching between profiles or adjusting brightness and the improved fine coated anti-glare screen is most welcome. Very important to me is the hardware calibration and its speed. You've previously seen me calibrate using the data color software, but the hardware calibration with the BenQ Palette Master Ultimate software is a doddle. Plug in your calibrator device, select the hardware in the PMU software, click a couple of buttons and that's it. The process is very quick and accurate. And with it being a hardware calibration, it means I can take this monitor to a workshop and plug it into any laptop and it's still correctly calibrated. The monitor is designed for photographers and specced accordingly so please check the links in the description below to learn more about its features but thank you again to BenQ for their support. Okay let's go ahead and print this first image. Now I used to create proofing copies etc but I've made so many prints that these days I just tend to go with my gut. The key thing for me is to make sure it's bright enough not too high in contrast and not too sharp. As it happens, I increased the exposure of this image by about a third of a stop since I first published it. And that doesn't sound like much, but it will help the final print. Printing from Photoshop, I don't bother to resize the image. I do so in the print dialog. No extra sharpening required because all that very fine detail in the branches could very quickly become brittle looking if additional sharpening is added. It's important to preserve the slightly surreal feeling of the image. Again, this video isn't intended to go through all the individual settings, but I'll remind you to ensure all color management is turned off in the print settings. Choose Photoshop manages colors and ensure you select the appropriate ICC profile for your paper. I'm using a custom profile supplied by Photospeed. I've already mentioned the idea of intent. Your vision in the field can carry through to your choice of paper too. It's about understanding your own style and choosing a paper that's respectful to the image's inherent qualities. If your image is subtle and quiet, then why make it shout with glossy paper? This isn't social media. A print doesn't have to be thrown into people's faces and fight for attention. It's about nuance, detail, texture, taking time to meander with your eyes and slow appreciation. Your style may be different to mine, but I always choose a matte paper. In this case, there's two things that I want to preserve, and that's fine detail and coolness. With that in mind, I want a bright white paper and something with a fairly smooth finish so that the intricate details of the branches don't get lost in the texture of the paper. My gut is telling me Photospeed NST Bright White, which is a 315 GSM heavyweight paper. It has a slightly mottled finish to it, but I quite like the look of that in the negative clean space of the image. I'm delighted with that. It's crisp, detailed, but soft enough to reflect the atmosphere of the day. So why go through all this effort and expense? Well, put it this way, I've never met anybody who prints that doesn't revel in the results. It's a revelation that perhaps deserves as much time and investment as what we give to the making of photographs. We don't need to make prints to know that photography is more than just about photographing things with names, such as a birch tree, a person or a mountain. It's so much more than that. Not least it's about a feeling, an emotion, a mood, something that becomes tangible and immersive when printed with consideration. Each step of the process isn't a standalone task, but a continuation of the last one so that the result is greater than the sum of its parts. How you print is just as individual as how you make photographs. Art is about your unique view of the world, what you choose to photograph, how you photograph it, how you render it, how you share it, what you want to say. I promise you that nothing beats the fulfillment of realizing your original work as a successful print. 
Not successful because it sold dozens of copies, but because it represents everything that you set out to achieve creatively. Okay, finally for comparison, let's print an image from autumn 2022, which I titled Lean On Me. Here's the unedited RAW file, which is a little bit on the warm side, so I've adjusted the white balance to reintroduce some coolness and add a touch of magenta, which just helps with the colour separation. Other than that, a similar scenario to before, add some brightness, but overall this is a darker image with an emphasis on rich colour and earthy shadows. I love this image. I first photographed it in late summer as a composition concept in dealing with the typical character and features of our native woodlands. As a dedicated woodland photographer, this encapsulates not only the location, but my own awareness of evolving both artistically and with other intentions. Arguably, not an obvious choice to print for commercial reasons, but I'd 100% put this on my wall with pride. That's an important point in itself actually, an image which represents a turning point or in your mind demonstrates a successful translation of an idea is the ideal candidate to be printed and displayed. So often we share images online and they might receive some kind comments but then they slip into digital darkness until we rediscover them. For goodness sake, print them, live with them, let them serve as a constant reminder of how and when you progressed. Let them be a reminder of not only why you love what you do, but what you're striving to achieve, not commercially, but artistically and personally. It might be that I look back on these prints two years from now and not feel as excited by them, but that's kind of irrelevant. Understanding where we've been and where we are right now helps to inform our next step so that we can keep on evolving and keep on enjoying photography. Okay, back to the print. Here's the final result on a paper which is warmer and more textured than the winter image. Again, for two key reasons, a warmer paper suits the autumn tones, but crucially, I wanted something that feels more rustic. Almost like the paper has imperfections to complement the imperfections that make woodland so charming. Interestingly, I tried the same platinum etching paper for this image, which I also love, but the bracken was rendered with a lack of detail and the color is a bit splodgy. The detail of the color and the wet bracken was rendered far better on a smooth platinum cotton paper. It's always worth experimenting if something doesn't feel quite right, as it's not the case that one size fits all. If ever there was anything to hit home the importance of printing, it was our Woodland Sanctuary exhibition in 2022. I cannot express how fulfilling it was to present a cohesive body of work in a meaningful way and just speak to visitors, listen to their reactions as they viewed the work from walkers to musicians to painters to chance passers-by. A print represents your view of the world, but can stir the imagination in others. And the truth is, printing makes you a better photographer. You've probably been given the advice before to slow down in the field because it helps you to notice and to observe. Practicing the art of printing heightens your appreciation of the subtleties in photography, such as texture, light, and incidental details. All the things which you'll learn to notice, observe and harness in the field. I hope this episode was enjoyable and it's got you thinking about printing. If you value my work, then there is a new place to support and learn from it over on Ko-fi. You can give one-off donations or benefit from the rewards of becoming a member, such as insightful posts and images, which I don't share anywhere else. The prints that you've seen today are available through my website, as well as others and books. And the calendar that I made with Trees for Life has been reduced to half price, so it's an absolute bargain to be had there. Your support, as always, is massively appreciated, but thank you very much for watching this episode, and I hope to see you again very soon. <laughs>